in our world of you know outdoor gear being in using clothing all clothing is made of generally woven or knit fabric and that fabric is inherently penetrable by moisture or, or rain or wind and so there's different ways of stopping the, the moisture or the precipitation from coming through. One of the first things that people may not realize or be aware of with their rain gear is that um, it relies heavily on a DWR treatment. It's a durable water repellent treatment. Um, that is a chemical application to the face fabric on the outside. A DWR is not permanent. Um, it's, think of it in terms of or similar to putting on sunscreen on your skin or a mosquito repellent. It's literally a spray on or an app applied onto a surface um, that adheres fairly well for a decent amount of time. So its job is to repel water from even sticking to the fabric and it does that, does that chemically. When you see images of water bouncing off a of fabric, that's the DWR doing its job. What it does is it creates a chemical um, adherence to the face fabric, and then in effect, when water hits it, the water wants to get itself off of that chemical treatment. It's not a permanent condition, and it's not a layer, it's not a coating, it's just a uh, uh, chemical application. When the DWR wears off, and I specifically use the word when because it's not if, it's when. It's not a permanent condition. When DWR wears off, now the performance and characteristics of the jacket itself, including how the membrane works with the garment, it all changes. So once the DWR wears off, now the face fabric is going to start absorbing or holding water more. And what happens then is now that water can almost move freely uninhibited straight to the membrane. Um, and this leads into where the other thing that people may not realize is that there's different types of membranes and membranes can function in different ways in being that barrier for water. In waterproof breathable rain gear, we like the, the most significant barrier is the waterproof breathable membrane. That can be either a, a laminated membrane that is laminated to the face fabric or it can be coated or like a basically think of it in terms of um, painting a wall. You're now think of that paint as that's a permanent coating that could have just as well been laminated. That membrane um, is incredibly thin. Um, it's not um, anywhere near the thickness of even the lightest of fabrics, um, but it is impenetrable by liquid drops of water, but it allows water vapor, so the gas form of water, to pass through it um, because it is porous. It, it does have microscopic holes or spaces that water can in the form of vapor pass through. There are hydrophobic and hydrophilic membranes, meaning there's, there's membranes that don't absorb any water. And um, a lot of membranes out there, people don't, aren't really aware of this, there are waterproof membranes that are designed that absorb water. Um, it's a little bit of uh, counterintuitive to think of it that way. Um, they absorb water, that doesn't mean they allow water to pass through it though. So what happens with a hydrophilic membrane, hydrophilic membranes um, function more um, or depend more on that absorbency of water to kind of swell the membrane and basically shut it off. It becomes swollen with moisture and the pores shrink up. Now it's saturated with water and two things happen. The breathability of that membrane goes away because it's now saturated with water. Um, water vapor cannot pass through a saturated hydrophilic membrane. Um, two, the other thing that happens is that's where people start to feel that wetting out effect. You're essentially feeling like you have water sitting against your skin. Say you're wearing short sleeves. You, it will feel almost just as if you were wearing a completely non-waterproof, just soaked garment. Um, because these are thin fabrics and membranes we're talking about. 
So once it's saturated on the outside, you're gonna feel what feels like all that water. Um, now, water is not dripping through the membrane in most cases, um, but that's, those are the two things that happen. A hydrophilic membrane is more breathable in its optimal state than a hydrophobic membrane. But once they do get saturated, they lose their breathability and they also start to get the wetting out or the clammy and, and wet sticky um, feeling that, that, that uh, people experience with that type. The other type of membrane, um, like I said, is hydrophobic. Hydrophobic membranes, um, they're also microporous. Um, they stop liquid water from coming through. They allow vapor to pass through. Um, they're not quite as breathable as a hydrophilic membrane. However, they do not, they do not absorb water. Hydrophobic membranes, because they don't absorb water, when that DWR of the face fabric wears off, the um, hydrophobic membrane is going to stay waterproof, but it will not get that wetting out effect. Um, and it doesn't lose breathability um, to nearly the degree that a, a saturated hydrophilic membrane will because again, it swells up with water and closes off pores, where a hydrophobic microporous membrane, it doesn't absorb any water. The pores are still there. They're still the same. So it maintains much of its breathability and all of its waterproof ability and um, eliminates or significantly reduces that wetting out effect that you get when, you're, when a DWR wears off. The, you know, there's different things to think about. A hydrophobic membrane um, is generally more waterproof. It has a higher ex like maximum rating of waterproofness and it doesn't wet out, it doesn't absorb water. A hydrophilic membrane is going to, in its optimal condition, be more breathable than a hydrophobic, but it's more susceptible to, um, we'll just call it getting wet, wetting out, um, that feeling of it's saturated and you can feel all that moisture against you. Um, so that's kind of the two things about, or the two types of membranes that are generally in most waterproof breathable rain gear. That kind of leads to the third thing that I think people are a little bit unaware of with rain jackets. We often think of rain jackets protecting from the harsh environment on the outside, kind of under, under siege, of the storms on the outside, but um, rain jackets actually undergo a lot of stress on the inside. Um, we create a really harsh environment for the, for the rain jacket from the inside out. So we're getting attacked by rain and cold and wind from the outside, but our rain jacket itself is undergoing a, a substantial amount of stress and it has to withstand that. So when I talk about this harsh environment inside our rain jacket, we are creating a very difficult situation for materials to hold up to. If we're just sitting still in a rainstorm and not moving, not generating any heat, um, that's actually a pretty, that's a very manageable environment for the inside of a rain jacket. Even though our bodies are still emitting a little bit of heat, a minute amount of moisture, um, but because we're not active, we're probably not emitting much salt in the form of sweat. We're backpacking, right? This jacket, or when we think about rain jackets, we're thinking about backpacking. We're very active. We have packs on our back. Um, we're going up and down hills or mountains. And that is when I say it creates a very harsh environment for the inside of our rain jacket. So now um, it creates a very humid and hot environment. Um, and now with our, our body heat, we're emitting a salty humidity that is just trying to push its way through the rain jacket like we talked about. But what happens with that salt? What happens with the oils from our body? Those are, those are chemicals, right? Membranes, seams, stitching, um, and the seam, the seam taping, or however a rain jacket is sealed from the inside, generally it's seam taping, that is all constantly under attack by hydrolysis, which is the chemical breakdown of things via water. Um, and now when you introduce salt and other chemicals from the body, that makes it even more 
um, prone to break down the composition of whether it's the membrane, the fabric itself, the, 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 the yarns, the threads, um, and the adhesive for the seam taping. Something to just be aware of is that not all rain jackets um, out there handle this the same way. Some brands and companies and fabric manufacturers will um, create simulated environmental um, tests that simulate um, that harsh environment that I was describing um, to test out how a finished garment, not just a membrane or not just a component of the garment, but test out how that finished garment handles that harsh environment. That's, that's pretty beneficial um, because we want to know that our bodies are going to be protected from the harsh environment outside, but our jacket is going to be constructed in a way that manages the harsh environment that we create by using it. Um, and we want to be able to use our jackets um, all day. If it rains all day, we should be able to use our rain jacket all day. Um, and there's so many factors that contribute to that. Um, the effectiveness of the rain jacket, all the things I've been talking about, um, fabric weight, durability, breathability, um, and then the, the internal design and, 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 and whether or not it was tested to a certain extreme. So at Outdoor Vitals, we've been working on rain jacket development for close to two years now. Um, by the time we release the jacket, it will have been just about two years of development. Um, and we really have gone about it in a way of tackling some of the, like the three things that I've been talking about. Like I said, once or when a DWR wears out, what do we do then? The, what happens next, right? So that's one of the things we wanted to tackle. We wanted to look at um, membrane types and how we could exploit their strengths and weaknesses and use them appropriately to get the best performance and combination of things for, for our rain jacket. So that's kind of the second thing we're trying to tackle with the rain jacket. The third thing um, is acknowledging the harsh environment that we create for our rain jacket by using it. We went through the process of tackling how we're gonna prevent that, how we're gonna delay that as much as possible. Like I said, we want the rain jacket to last a long time and perform every step of the way. I think one of the strengths that we have at Outdoor Vitals is we are, we are backpackers that get out a lot. Um, and we pretty much go like rain or shine. We don't want a rain jacket that we like can only use for like a 30 minute shower. Um, when, when we go backpacking, if it rains all day and we have an itinerary to meet, right? We want to be able to confidently wear a rain jacket all day. And we have done it and we will continue to do it. Um, so, so this is a rain jacket that you can wear in the rain with a backpack on all day with confidence. We, we wanted to make sure that it was durable enough to meet that demand, but also light enough that nobody was ever going to second guess packing it. You never want to need it and not have it, but we just want to always be able to bring it. So we, want, we wanted it to be able to confidently wear all day long, but light enough that we didn't regret packing it for those sunny days. We're confident that anybody could put this on and wear it in rain, in rain all day long. The jacket is breathable, it's ultra light, it's durable, it's designed not to fail.